Okay, now that we know the majority of the players that participate in this process of DNA replication, we're actually ready to look at the process itself. Uh, now, DNA replication in prokaryotes and eukaryotes really happens exactly the same way. The only difference is that in prokaryotes, there are fewer enzymes that are involved than what we have in eukaryotes. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use <clears throat> prokaryotic DNA replication as our base model here as we learn the process. Now, as we go through DNA replication, uh, there are some challenges that cells encounter when trying to replicate their DNA. And one of these challenges comes from the fact that DNA is double-stranded and these two strands run in an anti-parallel fashion, right? So the five prime end of one strand is next to the three prime end of the other and vice versa on the other end as well. That creates some difficulties, as does the fact that the DNA polymerase, which builds the new DNA strand, is a DIVA enzyme. And it has all these restrictions that need to be met before it can do its job. Right? Remember that DNA polymerases can only add to free three prime end. They can't start from scratch and they only run in that one direction. So on this slide, we've got a very simplified example of a double-stranded piece of DNA here uh, and an origin of replication in the middle and a DNA replication bubble that has opened up here in the middle. Remember that DNA replication starts at the origin and it moves in both directions away from the origin. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at just one strand at a time and see how this process takes place. So just to give you an idea of where we're going, for example, Let's look at the top uh, DNA template strand here. Here's the origin of replication, and we need to replicate this strand going towards the left side. All right, so the DNA template runs five prime to three prime. Um, and if we're gonna run and copy this strand over to the left, the first thing we need to do is we need to put down a primer, right? Because DNA polymerase needs that platform to jump off of. So if the DNA template runs left, to right, five prime to three prime. Then the next strand, including the primer, the complementary strand, including the primer, is gonna run five prime to three prime right to left. And so in red here, you see the little RNA primer that has been laid down. On the right-hand side, we've got the five prime end. On the left-hand side, we've got the three prime end. This is where DNA polymerase is gonna latch on, and it's just gonna continue chugging along, reading the DNA template and building a new uh, DNA strand to match. That's great. We've got the left side covered of the top strand. But we also have to have replication moving in the opposite direction, from the right towards the right from the origin on the top strand. The trouble is though that this primer that was laid down, right, this is a five prime end on the right side of that, of that primer. DNA polymerase cannot do anything with that five prime end. It can't add new nucleotides in that direction. It only goes forward, not reverse. So what do we do? Here's where we have to build the opposite half of that strand in a fragmented way. So we have to add now extra little uh, primers here, a little bit upstream, so that the DNA polymerase has these little sections to fill in from the platform that's been created by those extra little primers. And so we're gonna look at both formats of building this one complete DNA strand. We're going to look at what is called the leading strand that's built as one big chunk going to one side and then the opposite half of the strand will be built as what is called the lead, the sorry, the lagging strand um, built in those small chunks that are eventually stitched together. So as we go and look in more detail at how this takes place in prokaryotes, we're going to start first with the leading strand because it's simpler. Um, so we've zoomed in on one half of the replication bubble. So here's our origin. Here is where we have our two uh, original parental DNA strands that have been separated. You've got your single strand binding proteins. Here's the helicase that's doing the unzipping. And we have already added down an RNA primer, thanks to the primase. Here's the five prime end, here's the three prime end, and DNA polymerase three in this case in prokaryotes um, has latched on 
to the three prime end of this primer and is adding now nucle new nucleotides one at a time, moving in a five prime to three prime direction, right? So DNA polymerase can only add nucleotides running from the five prime to the three prime. So it's always adding to the three prime end. And you'll notice here that the DNA polymerase just continues chugging along the template, reading as it goes, um, and kind of falling behind the helicase that's constantly zipping more and more and more of this DNA. So DNA polymerase 3 in um, E. coli is going to be the main player, adding the majority of those new DNA nucleotides uh, to the building of this new DNA strand. All right, so let's take a look at this animation. Let's now look at the process of DNA replication more closely, starting at an origin of replication. The DNA opens up there to form a small bubble. Molecules of an enzyme called helicase attach to the DNA at the ends of the bubble and continue the unwinding of the double helix. We'll focus on one end of the bubble, on the Y-shaped region called a replication fork. The two strands would naturally tend to rewind, but are held apart by molecules of a single strand binding protein. The synthesis of a new strand begins when an enzyme called primase attaches and synthesizes a short RNA strand that is complementary to one of the DNA strands. This piece of RNA is a primer. DNA polymerase then adds DNA nucleotides to the three prime end of the primer. It continues to lengthen the new DNA strand by adding nucleotides complementary to the template strand. Notice that DNA synthesis always proceeds in a 5' prime to 3' prime direction. The strand just made here is called the leading strand. For clarity, we'll keep the new double-stranded DNA untwisted.